There's really never been a runner and a race walker in America that's managed to do both and be successful. It's different. A lot of people aren't accepting of that. But then again, there are a lot of supporters. I think Taylor could be certainly one of the best runners to come through Ohio, especially one of the most unique. Once you see your hard work pay off, it's really rewarding. And I think every day there's goals I want to accomplish and being able to see that goal out in the future and drive towards it, I think is really rewarding. I'm running for a reason and it's more than just making my parents and my coaches proud. For myself, I think if I'm going to work hard, I'm going to train hard. I'd love to be able to go down as one of the um, better runners in Ohio and hopefully in the nation. She's out there to be the best that she can be. And that allows her, I think, her to take risks. Um, that she's not afraid to go out and try something, to be willing to push. That's just who Taylor is. <laughs> Just relax, run your workout. Yep. Nothing special. No. Okay? So, I mean, Stay relaxed. Yeah, I'm gonna shoot for hey, 90s, just like imagine, Taylor, you now have a feel for the course. So just yeah. imagine like you're in the lead and you're just staying calm and relaxed, okay? Yeah. I think my first memory of track and field or cross country or just running in general, I think my mom, when she went, went out for her runs, she used to put my brother and I in a stroller and she'd push us along and then she'd stop at a track and she'd do her workout. So I remember running around the track and messing around and she'd be like, oh, here, run from there to there, I'll time you. And so I remember being at the track from a young age. She always wanted to be timed, so that was fun to see her enjoy it. I think then us telling them stories of how I met, you know, my husband was on the track team and, you know, we both ran and I think that inspired them to want to run. But all kids, if your parents do something, you want to kind of mimic that. 11, 12, 11, 13, perfect. Sometimes when you're young, you hit bumps in the road where you're not really sure of what kind of what sport you want to do. But I think as I got older, I had the appreciation that I've always seen them doing it. Um, and then I kind of got my own appreciation for it. We didn't push it. The strategy Terry and I both applied to all the kids was to let them find their own path. I did basketball. I did soccer. I figure skated for a while. And then I did running in middle school. When she was running middle school, I started to realize that the drive and the determination was there and the talent was starting to show, starting to come through. I think my biggest like inspiration when I was younger was I'd, when I was race walking and I won my first like national title from a young age. Like I kind of had my own little like swag as like an eight year old. So I think I was really inspired to like continue to like improve with like my race walking and my running and like continue to grow and try to, you know, be undefeated in my race walk. Good. Time. Close 110. Is that four? Yeah. When you're done, cool down. Sophomore year, her season was just, it was unbelievable. Every time we turned around, Taylor was, it was just like she would step up to a big competition and it was really a special year last year in her race walking and her running. And the road trip from New Balance to Juniors, it was a pretty hectic weekend. Taylor told me she was going to do this where she was going to do steeple and then she was going to do the race walk. And when the girl sets her mind to it, I knew she was going to do it. So we went there and I won, which was way more than we expected. It was kind of crazy because you want to enjoy the moment, but at the same time we're like, okay, I'm getting close, you know, I have less than 24 hours and I'm going to be racing again. The next thing I knew, I was on the track doing a 10K. Her race walk didn't surprise me. She's one that um, she can just switch gears in a second. So all she thought about was steeplechase. As soon as that was over, it was time for race walk. I always saw like, no one has that double. No one can ever say they have that double. Um, so it was real impressive. For me, I don't look at it as like that. I know I've accomplished those things, but I'm always trying to see what's the next big thing I can try to tackle. And, you know, I just love running so much. So whether I'm good at it, whether I'm not, I'm just, that's something I'm always continuing to do. How easy can we run the first mile? Okay. How quickly? How, how, how quickly? How really, how, I know we want it fast. Go out first. Because the first mile is all about position. The second mile, there's a lot of, when I, when I looked at the map, there's a lot of like surge corners and things. Yeah. Look at your, because there's always, anytime you get a surge corner where it's a blind, a five second surge, okay? Second is always stay your position or try to move up and then the third, you know what the third is. So get back and tell me what you guys think afterwards, because I want to run the course too. So. When Taylor first picked up race walking, I was surprised that she kept doing it because the kids get made fun of. She just looked past it. She had a good group. The race walk community is very, very small. They kind of just take care of each other and they support each other. And, I mean, it bothered her a little bit, but she would just talk to us and say, it's okay, just don't listen to them. Just do what you like to do. And she stuck with it. 
The reason I've probably stuck with brace walking since I was younger was, you know, I really enjoyed it, I liked it, I thought it was kind of different, and I was good at it too, and what young kid doesn't want to keep doing something they're good at, especially if I was winning meets, and then once I got, you know, a little bit older, middle school, and I kind of realized the potential I could have, you know, maybe if my running doesn't go anywhere, I can, I can still try to get a race walking scholarship, and, you know, maybe I can qualify to the Olympics. What kid doesn't want to pass up that kind of opportunity? I think she's found something that she's passionate about. She's met a lot of people, and she's got to travel around the world and to wear a USA singlet means the, the world to her to represent her country and she goes to these and it's something that she's found that she loves she just has a, a passion for it but she also has a passion for running so I've told her you know there always has to be that one person you're showing that you can be a, you know excel at a high level in running and race walking you're changing your sport there's a lot of pull from the race walking community why is she run? And then the running community is saying, why is she race walking? Deciding whether running, you know, that's a potential uh, D1 scholarship where race walking, they don't really have any D1 schools. So there's a big play in that. And I know that I do a lot more running and I, and I re enjoy race walking a lot, but I enjoy running a lot more. So, you know, if you look at the two, uh, running does come before race walking sometimes. But then again, it's so amazing to be able to go do something so unique and go on all the trips. And, you know, I don't think I'd be the athlete I am today without the race walking. The race, the races are a little bit bigger than this, but this is more of um, its name. So if we all just get out and do our job, or like we always do, and we've had workouts hard in this. People get in there, we got it. Beginning of a pump race. Yeah, just be patient and really push that last mile. I'm more driven than what I was last year and I think I have a lot more left in me and that like I have a lot more to learn and grow from so I think last year was a lot of finding who I am in races and running and race walking kind of making that statement for myself and kind of growing as a athlete. I would say Taylor is a ferocious, determined technician. I have seen her push hard. Her discipline is starting to come now, and I think it's because she's been able to pull in some control. She's so competitive, and she has she goes into a race, and she has a plan. Most teenagers, they're willing to do the running. The running part's the easy part for most of these kids. It's the core, it's all the little details that most of the kids aren't willing to do that can take you from one of the best in the state to one of the best in the country. I, I really think that defines who she is because we talk about, you know, to be successful as a runner, the same things to be successful in life. I've seen where I am without the details and I wasn't satisfied and I think you know, reading about it and getting interested in learning and then you see the details and you put in the work and you get the result. If you have the answers, then why wouldn't you, you know, use them? I think Taylor could be certainly one of the best runners to come through Ohio, especially one of the most unique. You talk about race walking, steeplechase, cross country, I know track as well. The thing I tell Taylor is she could change the sport of race walking. You could have a nation of little girls race walking because you're some Olympian someday. If she's gonna leave any legacy right now, it'd be, be a good athlete, be a good teammate, be a good student athlete, be a good representative. It's too early to talk about legacy. We're focused on the developing. I don't think track or cross country or running will define Taylor. It will be one of the elements that defines Taylor, but it will not be her only element that defines who she is.